Hangzhou Bay Bridge, the journey of bridges. They are long, high and indispensable. I am talking about bridges. That's exactly what this series is about. Every week, our team from TechWorld or the viewers choose a bridge that we can make an informative and catchy video about. Before we start, like and subscribe. Now that that's said, let's dive in. You must be curious to know the first bridge in the series, aren't you? Well, it will be the highest one, obviously. The Hangzhou Bay Bridge, which spans the Qiantang River in the Yangtze River Delta and the East China Sea, clocks in at a whopping 36 kilometers, making it the world's longest bridge across an ocean. When it was completed in 2005, it became the world's longest sea crossing surpassing the Donghai Bridge. The Hangzhou Bay Bridge, designed like the letter S, is a vital link along the East Coast Superhighway that runs the length of China. The bridge's northern terminus is Jiaxing, and its southern terminus is in Sishi County, Ningbo. Travel time from Ningbo to Shanghai is cut in half, from 4 hours to 2.5 hours, and the 120 km distance is reduced by the same amount. It is a six-lane, two-way highway with a speed restriction of 100 km per hour and a service guarantee of 100 years thanks to its cable-stayed construction. Now, what makes this bridge unique? Its construction and connection. It was the primary link in a national highway between the northern province of Heilongjiang with the southern province of Hainan, a distance of 5.2 km, for it is not the only longest one over a sea but also will be built in the world's most complicated sea environment with one of the three biggest tides on Earth, the effect of typhoons and the difficult content of the sea soil," said Wang Yong, chief director of the Hangzhou Bay Trans-Oceanic Bridge Construction Command Post. In 1994, preparations were made to begin building this bridge. The opening ceremony took place on June 26, 2007. After construction had begun in June of that year, for close to a year before the grand opening, Numerous trials and evaluations were carried out. In its first year of operation, after opening to the public in May 2008, the bridge averaged roughly 50,000 vehicles per day. The construction of the Hangzhou Bay Bridge began on November 14, 2003, and it was completed on June 26, 2007. The bridge opened to traffic on May 1, 2008. It's six lanes wide and can go 62 miles per hour, and will last for at least a century. By connecting the two cities, the bridge cuts travel time between Ningbo and Shanghai by more than two hours and creates a two-hour traffic circle that revolves around Shanghai from the provinces of Jiangsu and Zhejiang. Now an integral element of the Hangzhou Bay Circle Highway, it is also easily accessible via the Shenyang Haiku Highway, a major artery in China's national highway system, G92. The normal cost of crossing the bridge is 80 Chinese yen. Tolls for the lengths between the bridge's entrance and exit are in addition to the base toll. Therefore, the total cost to cross the bridge is roughly 135 Chinese yen. For the first time, landscape design principles were incorporated into the bridge's blueprints. The position and appearance of the bridge were planned with inspiration from the study bridge over Hangzhou's West Lake. The water environment of the Hangzhou Bay and the psychological activities of drivers and passengers, it looks like a lovely S when viewed from above full of life and motion. In order to accommodate passing ships and the ebb and flow of the Qiangtang River tide, the deck features two large projecting channels to the south and north, giving the impression of undulation. From south to north, each color of the rainbow is represented by the bridge's rails, red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, blue, and violet. A viewing platform, known as Land Between the Sea and the Sky, occupies an area of 12,000 square meters, three acres to the south of the South Channel, almost 18 kilometers from the South Bank. This platform was once used as a base for offshore workers during construction, but it has since been converted into the first and only tourist attraction of its kind. Built up of a tower and platform, it features a blue and white design. Entry to the platform costs 50 Chinese yen. The tower costs 60 Chinese yen, and a combination ticket to both costs 100 Chinese yen. The observation deck is a soaring 24-meter steel tower designed to evoke an eagle extending its wings. The lower two levels are parking garages, while the third floor houses the majority of the building's attractions, including an outdoor viewing area, inside cafe, multimedia theater, museum, and more. The hotel, which features a conference room and function hall, can be found on the fifth story. Above the shops and restaurants on the fourth, we reserve the sixth floor for our employees solely. The viewing tower rises to a height of 145.6 meters and is linked to the observation deck through a bridge measuring 42 meters in length. The Qiantang River Tide, 
Chiaxing Port and the Hangzhou Bay wetland may all be seen from the observation corridor on the 15th or 16th story. Travelers can catch a shuffle from either end of the bridge's service areas. The bus runs every 30 minutes and a one-way ticket costs 15 Chinese yen. Visitors who wish to drive themselves must first stop at one of the two service centers where they can purchase an admittance ticket and parking pass before continuing on to the land between the sea and the sky. On weekdays, small vehicles will be charged 10 Chinese yen per hour and large vehicles will be charged 15 Chinese yen per hour for parking while on weekends and holidays, the rates will increase to 20 Chinese yen per hour and 30 Chinese yen per hour, respectively. You know what? This bridge is rich with advanced technologies and one of them is GPS. Trimble supplied the GPS systems used to track progress on the building. The bridge span has to be precisely positioned in the ocean for the project to succeed. Trimble 5700 RTK GPS systems with a reference station for differential corrections increased accuracy over greater distances, which in turn boosted production. In order to provide millimeter accuracy for the real-time placing of piles and prefabricated parts of the bridge, a total of 50 5700 RTK GPS systems were set up where the bridge spans the Bay of Hangzhou and additional devices were located on barges. What if a bridge has every basic facility? A 10,000 square meter service island with hotels, restaurants, gas stations and a viewing tower is proposed for the bridge's dead center so that wary drivers may take a break and enjoy the sights. The rising and falling of the Chiantang River Tide are also anticipated to make the service island popular with visitors. Because we don't want to mess with the tide, the entire service island will be constructed on piers. Each end of the bridge will also feature a public park. The bridge's construction necessitated the installation of traffic control and monitoring systems, communication tools, toll booths, a reliable power source, enough lighting, a maintenance facility, and administrative offices. You must be wondering, we haven't touched Huangzhou's layout, right? Well, we are about to. There are nine individual spans that make up the Huangzhou Bay Bridge. The first is a bank that leads to a road that leads to the northern approach. The northern approach is supported by low piers that have post-tension concrete box girder spans that cross over pre-stressed continuous concrete box girders and drill shaft piles. The north approach is what leads to the north navigable bridge which is a cable-stayed bridge with twin towers in the shape of a diamond, double cables, and steel box girders. The primary span that makes up the north approach is 448 meters long. The overall length, which includes the side spans, is 908 meters. The continuous length of the post-tension 70-meter concrete box girder spans on the north high piers brings the overall length to 1,470 meters. The approach to the middle bridge is supported by low piers and features post-tension concrete box girder spans of 70 meters with a total length of 9,380 meters. The south high piers have post-tension concrete box girder spans that are continuous 70 meters in length and have a total length of 1,400 meters. The length of the eighth segment is a total of 19,373 meters and it is divided into three parts, such as the in-water portion, is 6,020 meters long and has girders that are 70 meters tall and steel piles. A mud flat portion is 10,000 meters long and has girders that are 50 meters tall and drill shafts. Land segment measuring 3,253 meters with girders ranging from 30 to 80 meters in height and drill shaft foundations. The ninth segment is Bank Lead Road, which is located on the southern approach. This was the Hangzhou Bay Bridge for you. What do you want the next bridge to be in the series? Let us know in the comments and we will make sure to never let you down. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a video.